buy the shirt or whatever on a deal, mm -hmm. but if you don't pay off that balance, yeah, then that deal isn't mm -hmm. a deal anymore. What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse bouge Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to The Perfect Bites, episode 81. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and today we're talking about Baby Stacks Cafe. Next, we'll talk about good debt versus bad debt. And finally, we'll share what to buy and what to skip in January. Each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. This week, we're sharing a longtime favorite of mine, Baby Stacks Cafe. Uh, they have seven locations in Southern Nevada. The one that I'm most familiar with is the Centennial Hills location that's on Durango off of Elkhorn. And I believe I've been going there since just about when they first started in 2010. I moved to Centennial in 2011. And yeah, it was always like the neighborhood hotspot for breakfast or lunch. Breakfast specifically, I remember waking up a lot of mornings and it's like, you know, when the kids are young, like, what are we gonna do today? Let's go to breakfast. And Baby Stacks was our place. You'd always expect to see a line at the door, people standing, waiting for their table to be ready. And to me, that's another good sign of like a good restaurant mm -hmm. so on this recent visit I went with my husband husband and um, breakfast time we went during the week so we did not have the long wait which was nice we got to go in and get a table right away and I ordered my breakfast favorite ham and eggs it comes with two hams or spam I did the ham um, and then two eggs cooked to any style my way of doing it is eggs hard add cheese cheddar cheese you um, taught me that I love it. I, I love didn't it. even Hard. know that was an option. Hard for eggs. I don't like them soggy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can also add uh, either baby stacks, buttermilk baby stacks, which are pancakes, or toast. I always do wheat toast. That's just my go-to. And then um, you can add uh, on the side steamed rice or potatoes. And I did the potatoes. They cut them in these cubes, like really jumbo cubes, and then season them to perfection. I mm. love those. Those are like my most favorite thing on the whole plate. Um, and that was about $11.50. And then on the side, I ordered a large orange juice, which I hadn't realized. I guess I hadn't been here for a while, but large is large. It was like the size of a small carton. <laughs> $5.75, definitely worth mm -hmm. it. I had a lot of orange juice to drink, and I drank it all. Orange it was, juice, like fresh orange juice, is always expensive, though. Yeah. Like I'm always like, what? How much was that? It was it was good, though. Yeah. And so the, the smaller option, I think, was like three-something. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't like orange juice all that much definitely do the smaller one i think when i go back though the one thing that i've never tried despite this being like my favorite place is their signature red velvet baby stacks when you pull up their um, menu that's like the first thing that they're showing you those red velvet mm -hmm. baby stacks and they top it with a whipped cream chocolate crumbles cream cheese syrup on the side sounds absolutely delicious but i'm more of like the savory versus mm -hmm. the sweet kind of side but i'm I'm going to do it. Maybe to share. Try get half and half. Like you guys can have a savory and a, yeah. a sweet. That's a good idea. We'll do that. My recommendation for you is that, like I mentioned before, they are only a breakfast and lunch spot. So keep that in mind that they close at 2 p.m. during the week and 3 p.m. on the weekend. Um, but they are open super early in the morning. So they open up at 7 a.m. bright and early. You can get there, make that your first stop of the day. And um, if you at home have a recommendation for a restaurant or a dish for us to try, send us a message at the perfect bite at ccculv.com. We're always open to new ideas. Debt is always bad, right? Well, not all the time. Turns out while there is bad debt, there's also such a thing as having good debt too. Next up, we're going to discuss good debt versus bad debt. Which ones are you carrying? So this comes from our financial resource Bonsai, which is on our website. It's a free tool for anyone. There's lots of different topics on there. And so the first thing to determine whether the debt is good or bad is to look at why you're carrying the debt and what it's doing for you. Here are some key differences between examples of carrying good and bad debt. 
So a good debt, a property loan. So we talked in a previous episode about, you know, purchasing a home and having the insurance. So that property value will hopefully appreciate over time. And the loan payment goes towards principal, which is like paying yourself because it builds equity in your home. And so that is something like it's okay to go into debt to purchase a home. Um, Paying for your loan also builds positive credit history. So when we think about being in debt, a lot of times people don't even include their home. You know, Mm -hmm. they're like, oh, well, I have a home, but I'm not in debt. You know what I mean? It's just, it kind of has a different vibe to it. What could be considered bad debt? Financing meals on a credit card. So you listen to The Perfect Bite and you love all of our restaurants and you just put it on a credit card. The drawback is if you're unable to pay off that, you know, the meals that are financed, you begin paying interest on the purchase. Um, You pay that interest on fast food. It kind of takes the value out of the value meal, right? Like, why are we purchasing that? I was looking at my Old Navy credit card, Mm -hmm. 29% interest. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. That would not be a good reason to go into debt yeah, because I bought shopping by the shirt or whatever on a deal. Mm-hmm. But if you don't pay off that balance, yeah, then that deal isn't mm-hmm. a deal anymore. Yeah. 30%. That's just, I thought I was like, Oh, I didn't even realize it was that high, but definitely not one you want to carry over and, and revolve uh, that debt. So because the home and auto loans are generally lower interest rates than those credit cards, you know, I don't think most credit cards are at that quite high of a percent, but you use the equity in your home or auto loan and it kind of balances out the rate, right? So it's kind of considered good debt. However, if you find yourself falling into the trap of running the balances on your credit cards after having paid them off, I think that good debt can be transformed in, into bad debt. I feel like that's something really important to teach our kids, right? Or anyone who's kind of learning about their credit is what can be considered good or bad debt. Whatever debt you do carry, just use our financial tool. Uh, it's called Managing Debt on our Bonsai site and to learn if, if you're carrying the right kind of debt and what you need to do to get out of the bad ones. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $73 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.6 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured by American Share Insurance. Next up is our Future Self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. Although the frenzy of holiday shopping is over, now is a good time to shop. Or it could be a good time to shop. We're going to discuss the things that you should buy in January and the things that you should avoid. The first thing that you should buy, if you need it, are Christmas decorations. You can get some great deals on decorations for next Christmas. Typically, the deals start right after Christmas, and they are significantly higher in January, so higher discounts. Um, If you can store the items all year um, for next Christmas, definitely see if you can do it. Last year, I actually, I was able to go to Big Lots and Walmart and find some deals that I was able to use this past Christmas. I found some glass cups. They were National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which I absolutely (laughs) love, that movie. (laughs) And so I got like tumblers. I got the little moose um, hedge. I don't know if you're familiar with the movie, but they had the little moose Moose glass. I got those pajamas for my little girl. I was like, okay, let's just add, size them up. So this year, this past year, she was able to wear those. Finally, I got bows, bags, and there were no, even a cookie mm-hmm. jar. Um, this expensive cookie jar that I would have felt was expensive traditionally, got it for half the price. And uh, this past Christmas, I was able to enjoy it all season long. So what's the trick to remember that you bought it last year and where you put it so then you can actually... I use it because I do this. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. I totally Where forgot about go? that. Where did they mm-hmm. put them? Um, the bows and stuff. I kind of tried to put them already in the locations that they would be at um, if I was going to be using them. So the cookie jar. I just put it in my cabinet with all of my other jars. And I kind of saw it year round. Mm. It was just like that constant reminder. Cookie jar, cookie jar, cookie jars there. Glasses, same thing. I just put it on a shelf above my regularly used glasses so that I knew that you know, my other glasses are there. And then for the pajamas, that one I almost did forget. Um, But luckily when I was cleaning out my closet, pulling out the decorations, it popped out and I was like, oh my gosh, put these pajamas on. (laughs) Well, we washed them first, but yeah. (laughs) Things to avoid are a new gym membership. 
Now, if you're like many Americans, healthy lifestyles is a common New Year's resolution, and gyms know this. So unfortunately, a lot of people will uh, fail at this resolution and end up spending money on a membership that that doesn't get used. Um, And you have to sign a contract for the most part. So our recommendation is wait until at least February, see how you're feeling with this new healthy lifestyle, and if you can commit to it, then get the gym membership, or if you can find one, opt for a month-to-month plan. Another thing you should look into buying is fitness equipment. So like the gym membership or similar to the gym membership, it is a New Year's resolution, right? But the difference is many retailers will run discounts on home equipment to accommodate those New Year's resolutions. So take advantage of those. Another thing to avoid are smartwatches. This, again, goes along with the New Year's resolution. Now, according to a report from Nerd Wallet, the prices during January sales were higher than any other sales day tracked. But as of the report, the best time to actually buy one was during Amazon Prime Day, which is typically during the summer. So they increased the prices for smartwatches. And then the last thing to buy are TVs. Now, the best bargain on TVs typically happen right before the Super Bowl. This year's Super Bowl is going to be Sunday, February 11th. Um, And I think we can also mention that the credit union, we're hosting a social media promotion. So you can find an even bigger deal. If you catch this episode before February 4th, you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram page for our big game giveaway, where we will be giving away a 65 inch 4K television, a Traeger tailgating griller uh, slash smoker, a $500 gift card for food, grill kit, a few other goodies. But yeah, you can get a really good deal on some TVs because they expect you to be watching the big game on your big new TV. So they want to get you a deal. To learn more about the giveaways and to see snippets from past Perfect Byte episodes, you can check us out on social at CCCULV. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was the perfect bite.